Welcome back to the class on uh, electrical vehicles and hybrid electric vehicles. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the roadway fundamentals part one. So, why we are going to study the roadway fundamentals? Because the vehicle is moving on the roadway. If you can able to describe the roadway, then we can easily find out how much distance is traveled by the vehicle on the roadway. So that we can find out the velocity as well as the axle. From that, we can find out the how much power is required to move the vehicle on the road against the some forces. That much of force will be developed by the propulsion unit. So, we are going to design the propulsion unit in a way that the vehicle will be moving on the road against the some force. To describe the roadway, first we are going to see the fixed coordinate system. Fixed coordinate system is nothing but the almost a conventional coordinate system or the x-axis and y-axis and z-axis. In each axis we are defining the unit vector. But here we are, we are representing the x-axis as the x-axis, y-f axis and z-f axis. The unit vector in the x-f axis is nothing but i-f bar. The unit vector in the y-f axis is nothing but j-y bar. The unit vector in the direction of z-f axis is nothing but j-y bar. We are fixing the roadway to the x-axis. The gravitational force on the vehicle that is perpendicular to the i-f bar. The gravitational force which will be lie only in the x-f y-f. So one more important point what we have to remember is that we are assuming that the steering is fixed in the direction of x-f axis. These are the some of the essential what we have to take. When the vehicle is moving on the road, we can't say exactly that is a plane road or a variant road. Initially, we are taking the roadway is a plane road. Next, we are going to find out the tangential coordinate system. The tangential coordinate system we are representing with respect to the fixed coordinate system so that we can easily find out the how much distance is traveled by the vehicle with the help of tangential coordinate system. Now, here we have taken the x Axis, this is the yf axis, this is the roadway. On the roadway, we have taken the one point, the corresponding this point, xf0. This roadway we can describe it with some function so that we can easily find out the y coordinate by means of f of xf0. The position vector is nothing but it is a vector which is line joining the, the point on the roadway to the origin of a fixed coordinate system. Now we are going to find out the generalized expression for the Position vector because we are going to find out what is the tangent of the position vector that is lies only in the roadway. So, here we have taken the two points on the x f axis. The position vector between the points A and B that is defined as R f bar of x f equal to x f into i f bar plus f of x f into j f bar, where x f is lies between the A and B. i f bar and y f bar is the Unit vector in the direction of x f bar and of y f bar. x f is nothing but the coordinate of the point on the x f axis. f of x f is nothing but on the coordinate of the point on the y axis. Now we are going to find out the tangent of this vector. Distance traveled by the vehicle is easier to express in terms of a tangential vector of the road position vector. That's why we are finding the tangent to this vector that is nothing but a derivative of this vector. So, t bar of x of equal to dr bar by dx bar that is equal to f bar plus df by dxf bar into df bar. The tangential roadway length s is the distance traveled along the roadway. Mathematically, it is represented with a s which is representing the arc length. Suppose if we take the one point here, another point here, this is arc length. So, yf equal to f of xf, where xf is lies between the a and b. This also we can calculate another way, integral a to b modulus of t bar of xf dxf. This is the magnitude of the tangential vector. Next, we are going to find out the, up to here we have seen the normal roadway. Suppose if the vehicle is moving on the gradient roadway, then we should know how much is the angle of that gradient? The roadway percentage gradient is a vertical rise per 100 horizontal distance roadway. Suppose if we take this is a xf axis, this is a yf axis, this is a roadway, that one. First, we are drawing it tangent to the roadway where we want to find out the gradient. By taking the 100 meters on the horizontal axis, how much rise in a yf direction that is representing the gradient. This quantity and this quantity should be in the same, you know, that will be the meter or the kilometer. So, the percentage gradient equal to delta y by 100 into 100 percentage that is equal to delta y percentage. The tangent of the slope is given from this triangle which that is tan beta equal to delta y by 100. So, the beta f equal to tan inverse of df of xf by 
dx. If the beta is greater than the zero when the vehicle is moving upward or upward slope, the beta value less than the zero then the vehicle is moving on the downwards. This is representation of the gradation gradient angle in terms of the total flash of motion. We know that the resultant force which is acting on the object is proportional to the acceleration of the object. In this case, object is nothing but in this case object is nothing but vehicle. When the vehicle is moving on the road, there is a different forces which is acting on the road. The gravitational force is acting on the vehicle. When the vehicle is moving on the road, the road also will be experiencing some amount of force on the vehicle. There is some amount of force will be between the wheels and the roadway. When the vehicle is moving, the frontal area of a vehicle also affected with a eight drag force. These are the different forces which are acting on a vehicle at a different location. But it is very difficult to analyze the, the position of the force which is acting on the vehicle is different. So that's why here we are representing the vehicle with the center of gravity of the vehicle. The center of gravity of the vehicle always lies within the vehicle. So now one word, we are not representing the total vehicle body. So whatever the force is acting on the vehicle, we are taken acting at a center of gravity of the vehicle. From the Newton second law, sigma fi equal to m into a bar, fi is nothing but the force which is acting on the center of gravity of a vehicle, m is nothing but the mass of a vehicle, a is nothing but the acceleration of a vehicle. Now here we have taken this is the center of gravity of the vehicle, different forces which are acting on the vehicle. This is f1 to fn, intermediate value we have taken fi bar. This is the fixed coordinate system, the r bar is nothing but a position vector of the vehicle with respect to the origin of the fixed coordinate system. Where V is the velocity of the vehicle, A is the acceleration of the vehicle, then we can define the V bar equal to dr bar by dt and acceleration also we can define as the derivative of the velocity of a vehicle. Now power given by the one force to the vehicle at a center of gravity, that we define as a Pi equal to F i bar dot V bar. This is equal to the magnitude of F i bar and magnitude of V bar and the cos of the angle between the F i and V bar. Where theta is nothing but a angle between the F i and V. So in this manner we can find out how much how much power is given to the vehicle due to the force. Suppose if the body is rotating in a circular motion, then also we can apply the Newton's second law. Where J is the polar moment of center of gravity CG of the vehicle that is represented in kg per meter square. The force or object which is rotating in a circular motion, force on a particle, a rigid body rota rotation, sigma Ti equal to T net equal to J alpha. Ti is nothing but a torque on a object which is moving in a circular motion. T net is nothing but a resultant torque. J is nothing but a polar moment of the center of gravity of the vehicle. Alpha is nothing but a angular acceleration. Where alpha equal to dW by dt, that is equal to d square theta by dt square. Circular path in which particle is moving. The T net is acting in this direction, so the speed of a particle also will be moving in this direction. The power input to the particle due to the T i torque where Pi equal to T into omega, where omega is nothing but a angular frequency of a particle which is moving in circle. So in this manner we can apply the Newton's second law for the body which is moving on the plane road as well as the circle. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my YouTube channel.